Hi, my name is Lisa. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make this really cute sunflower hot pad. I keep wanting to call it a pot holder, but if you tried to take a pan out of the stove with this, you would definitely burn yourself. So I would not recommend it for that. For this project, you'll need three colors of yarn. You'll need brown for the middle, your choice for your sunflower petals. I'm using Red Heart Super Saver in bright yellow. It is a medium size 4 worsted weight yarn. It recommends using a 5.5 millimeter hook. I'm going to be using a 4.5 for this. And I am using Patty Green for the outer edges of the petals. You won't need very much of any of these colors of yarn. You will also need a stitch marker, a row counter can be handy, it's not required, but it does come in handy. A darning needle to weave in your ends. A pair of scissors. And of course your crochet hook. Hopefully this is zoomed in enough for you to see. To begin this project, you'll need to grab your brown yarn, make a slip knot. If you prefer using a magic ring, you can use a magic ring for this. I'm going to make a chain four ring. One, two, three, four and slip stitch into the first chain to form a ring. And then chain one. This chain one throughout the middle part, this brown middle part of the flower, does not count as a stitch. You're going to single crochet seven times in the ring. There's one. Put your hook in, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through both loops. Insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through both loops. Insert your hook, yarn over, I'm sorry, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through both loops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Get this yarn out of the way. You're going to slip stitch into the first single crochet. Not into the chain, but into the single crochet. chain one and work two single crochets in each of the seven stitches. So insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through both loops. 
one and two. Make two single crochets into the next single crochet. One and two. And this is in US terms. I believe in UK terms it's called a double crochet, but in US terms it's a single crochet. Single crochet two times in the next single crochet. And into the next one, two single crochets. Repeat that around to the end and I'll meet you back up here. Okay, I'm at the end. I'm going to count to make sure I have 14 stitches. Just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. You're going to slip stitch into that first single crochet. Might be a little bit tight. Chain one. One single crochet into the same single crochet that you just joined. And two single crochets into the next single crochet. one in the next single crochet and two into the next and this is what you'll repeat all the way around one single crochet in the next and two single crochets in the next one single crochet in the next and two single crochets in the next at the end of this round you should have 21 single crochets It's important when you get to the end of each round that you make sure that you're not slip stitching or crocheting down here or right here. This is where the single crochet is, right here. This is where you get a needle. This right here is where you want to single crochet for your next round. I'm sorry, slip stitch in here to make your next round. And we are on round four. Round four. So slip stitch into that first single crochet. chain one and single crochet in the same stitch one single crochet in the next stitch and two single crochets in the next stitch each of these rounds will be increase rounds and there will be seven of them. So one single crochet in the next stitch, one single crochet in the next stitch, and two single crochets in the next stitch. Repeat that to the end, one single crochet in the next stitch, one single crochet, two single crochets, one single crochet, one single crochet, and two single crochets. At the end of round four, you will have 28 single crochets. I've made it to the last few stitches. We've got one in this single crochet one in this single crochet and two single crochets in the last single crochet of the round. Slip stitch 
into the first single crochet to join. First one's almost always a little tight. There we go. Chain one and we are ready to start round five. Single crochet into the same single crochet that you joined in. One single crochet in the next single crochet. One single crochet in the next single crochet. Two single crochets in the next single crochet. So the pattern this time is one single crochet in the next three single crochets and then two single crochets. One, two, three, four and five are together. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four and five are in the next single crochet together. In the same single crochet. That's what I should have said. So finish that up to the end. One single crochet in the next three single crochets. So that's one in that one, one in that one, one in that one, and then two in the next one. Okay, I've made it to the last of the stitches in this round and I should have told you that you would have 35 stitches at the end of this round. So there's one single crochet in that one, one in the next, one in the next, and two in the last one. One and two. Slip stitch into the first single crochet of the round. Chain one. We are ready for round six. Single crochet into the same as you joined. single crochet in the next single crochet, single crochet in the next single crochet, single crochet in the fourth single crochet, and two single crochets to increase in the next single crochet. So in this round you will single crochet four times and then put two single crochets in the next single crochet. So it's one in that one, one in that one, one in that one, one in that one, and two in that one. One, two, three, four, and two in the fifth single crochet. So I'll show you that again. One, two, three, four, and then five and six will be in the same single crochet to increase this round. There's one, 
two, three, four, five, and six in the same single crochet. So repeat that all the way around one single crochet in the next four single crochets one two three four and two into the fifth single crochet all the way around and you should have 30 42 42 you should have 42 single crochets at the end of this round okay I have made it to the last grouping at the end of this round There's one two three four five and six go into the last single crochet of that round. Make sure that you're not slip stitching here or here but you're actually in the first single crochet here. Slip stitch into that single crochet and chain one. Something I should have explained at the beginning, why I chose a smaller hook. I like for these hot pads to be nice and tight so that the heat doesn't really go through onto wooden surfaces. It seems to hold the heat in the yarn better than accidentally messing up your furniture. I hope that makes sense. For round seven, the last round of the brown, you will have 48. Now I know that an increase seven times should be 49 but it's important that you don't put two single crochets in the last single crochet. You'll only put one. You need an even number when you get to the end of this for the petals to work out properly. So we're going to increase six times for this round and we'll have 48 single crochets at the end. So to start round seven, you single crochet in the same single crochet where you made your slip stitch joined and you chained one and single crochet in the next, single crochet in the next, single crochet in the next, single crochet in the next stitch, and then two single crochets in the next. So each grouping will be seven stitches. You'll have five single crochets in each of the next five single crochets and then two single crochets in the sixth single crochet. So you'll have one, two, three, four, five, and then two single crochets. So that's one single crochet, one single crochet, one single crochet in the third, one single crochet in the fourth, one single crochet in the fifth, and two single crochets in the sixth.
finish that all the way around until you get to the last stitch and I will meet you up back here to show you how to finish up the last grouping. Okay, I'm up to my last grouping and remember we're not going to put two double crochets in the last one. So you should only have one single crochet in the last six each. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And this is where it's important to go back and count all of your stitches all the way back around. If by any chance you don't have exactly 48 in this round, fix it here. If you need to add an extra one or take out one, you can add it here. So to add an extra one, you would just add the extra one on the end. If you need to take one away, go back here to where you put two in and just put one in. It's important to have 48 at the end of this round if you happen to have messed up anywhere along the way. I know that I do occasionally. And this is where the pattern is a little bit un... I'm sorry, this is where the pattern's a little bit forgiving you can add or take away in this last round to make sure that you have 48. And here we're going to end with the brown. We're going to slip stitch in that first single crochet of the round and fasten off. Now, I've watched a lot of videos. I've gotten a lot of advice from crocheters and most crocheters chain one they snip their thread or their yarn and they just pull it through that one chain I have had my work come out when I've done that in the past I don't know why but it does happen. If you've ever had that happen to you, you know how frustrating it can be. So what I have started doing is chaining a second time, pulling my yarn through and securing this knot down really tight. I just push it down with my nails until it's really, really tight against those stitches. And then when you sew in that end, there's no chance that it's ever going to come unraveled. So we'll go ahead and sew in these two ends real quick. So just thread your needle and just work through a few of these stitches. I'm just going to go down through them this way. and come back up through them, skipping that first one. And do that again a third time to secure that yarn in place. And snip it. I'm going to do the same thing with this one. For this one, I'm just going to go around a few of these stitches in the middle. Give it a nice little tug. Bring that hole in just a little more. Go back through the other way for a few stitches. that should be good. And snip that little tail off. OK, 
Okay, we're ready to start round eight. Your project should look about like this right now. And you're going to work from the right side facing you, still and always. Um, you can tell the wrong side, it doesn't look quite as neat. It's a little it doesn't have these circles the way the front does. If you like the back better, if you would like that to be the middle of your sunflower, then by all means use that. You can use a lighter colored yarn if you want. I just had this dark brown on hand, so that's what I used. So to attach your new color, your petal color, you're going to want to make a slip knot. Now the pattern says to slip stitch your new color on and then chain one, but I have found that it's pretty easy to do. You put your slip stitch on your hook. We're just going to make a chain one instead of a slip stitch and a chain one and then putting a chain one or a single crochet on there. So to do that you just put your yarn on your hook, your slip knot on your hook, you go through the same single crochet that you joined in, bring up a loop, and single crochet as usual. And then you just have a single crochet instead of the regular join. And now we're going to chain nine one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and single crochet in the next single crochet. Now I'm working over my tail so I won't have to sew it in as much at the end. You don't have to sew it in at all if you work over top of it, but I still find it handy to work over top of it and sew it in, just to make for double sure that it's not going to come loose. So single crochet in the next single crochet and chain nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Single crochet in the next single crochet, single crochet in the next single crochet, and this is where you're going to repeat. Chain nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Single crochet in the next two. One, and two, and then chain nine again. And that's how you're going to work the petals all the way around. So you'll single crochet, chain nine, single crochet, single crochet, chain nine, single crochet, single crochet, chain nine, single crochet. I'll meet you up when we get here to show you how to finish up this round. I've worked my way around the petals to this point. So each petal was a single crochet, chain nine, single crochet. The next petal is single crochet, chain nine, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, oops, and single crochet into the next stitch. 
single crochet in the next stitch, chain 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and single crochet in the next stitch. single crochet into the next stitch, chain 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, single crochet, and single crochet into the last single crochet. Now from here, we should have 20 set, 24, 24 petals. There should be 24 of these chain 9 spaces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. And we're ready for round nine. You're not going to slip stitch to join this round. Right here where you made your last single crochet, go ahead and add your stitch marker here. You're not going to slip, well, yeah, you're not going to slip stitch into this first single crochet. You're going to go straight into these chains, not into the chain space not into the space, but into each individual chain. And you're going to work one single crochet in the first four. This round is the most fiddly part of the whole thing. So we've got one single crochet, two, three, and four. Now into the fifth single crochet, this one right here at the top of your petal, you're going to put three single crochets in there. That's one, two, three. You're going to work four single crochets down the other side, one in each chain. One, two, three, four, oops, get in there any way that you can. This one I think is one to give me a fit because I'm on camera. Alright, 
There's the fourth one. Now you're going to skip over this, the single crochets, and you're going to work into the next chain over here. And you're going to work four up the one side. That's one. Two. Three and four. Into the fifth chain up here at the top, you're going to make three single crochets in that stitch. One, two, three. Then you're going to work one single crochet in each stitch down the other side for a total of four. One, two, three, Again, you're going to skip over the single crochets and work into the next petal, the next chain nine. You're going to work four single crochets up one side, three single crochets in the fifth chain, and four single crochets down the other side. That's one, two, three, four, and three into this one. One, two, three, and four down the other side. One, two, three, and four. I'll show you one more time. Skip over the single crochets and start in this chain here and work four single crochets up one side Put three single crochets in the top. One, two, three. And work four single crochets down the other side. One, two, three. And four. And don't worry if your petals are turning on you. They're going to do that. That's just how they work through the pattern. Comes out really cute in the end. But finish up your other 20 petals and I'll meet you here at the end to show you what to do for the next round. When you get to the end of round nine, go ahead and move your stitch marker up to that last stitch. Okay. 
just like the last round, we're not going to slip stitch into that first single crochet on this side. And we're going to work in the back loops only for rounds 10 and 11. So single crochet in the back loop only for four. Back loops are this, the loop that's farthest from you, so not that first loop that's facing you, but the second loop of that V. Into the fifth back loop, you're going to make three single crochets. One, two, three, and then four single crochets down the other side. One, two, three, four. And then you're going to skip the next two single crochets. You're going to skip the next two single crochets and single crochet into the back loop of that stitch. And single crochet into the next three. Oops. Just try to get that back loop and not anything that's like in the back back here. Single crochet three times into the next stitch. And single crochet back down the other side four times. One, Two, three, four. Skip the next two. Single crochet in there. This one. Two, three, four, and single crochet three times into the next. One, two, three. You're going to repeat this around, crocheting one time into each of the next four, skipping over two single crochets, single crochet up this side four times, single crochet three times into that top single crochet, and single crochet four times down the other side, all the way until you get to the one right before your stitch marker. So your last one will be in the one right before your stitch marker. And I'll meet you up when we get here. Okay, so I am at the end of round 10. I'm going to move my stitch marker up to the last stitch. That last single crochet right there.
and this is the final round for the petals. Oops. We're going to skip two and work into the back loop of round 11. And we're going to do the exact same thing that we did for round 10. We are now on round 11. So we've single crocheted in that first single crochet here of this petal. And we're going to do that three more times. One, two, three, and three single, single crochets in this top single crochet. One, two, three, and four single crochets down the other side. We're going to skip these two single crochets and single crochet into that next single crochet. And we're going to continue this all the way around until we reach the single crochet right before our stitch marker. That'll be our last single crochet. When we get here, I'll show you how to make the hanging loop. Now you'll notice that your work is twisting up on you, which is fine. That's what you want it to do. At the end, we'll make sure that all of these are turned so that they create the petals. So work your way around just like you did the last row and I'll meet you up when we get back here to the end. Now that you've made it to the end of round 11, you can go ahead and remove your stitch marker. You're not going to need that anymore. We're going to make the hanging loop. To make the hanging loop, you want to chain 11. One, two, three. Oh, my mistake. That last stitch that you make in round 11 needs to be through both loops, not just one. and then chain 11. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We're going to skip over these two just like we have been throughout the petal area and slip stitch into this first single crochet of that next petal. And then fasten off. I like to fasten off by chaining two. And then snipping my yarn. I usually give myself a little tail, not a very big one, to sew in my ends a few inches long and tug it down pretty tight. Then you're going to want to grab your green yarn and we'll be ready to crochet the 12th and final round. A 
attach the green in that same space that you slip stitched into. Make a slip stitch and a single crochet in that same space. Now again, you're only going to be working in the back loops. So, single crochet, the back loops only. And I like to work over top of my tails. That will be your second one. Third. and forth. In the top single crochet of the petal, you're going to make a single crochet, a pico, that is you chain one, two, three, and slip stitch into that first chain that you made that closes up the pico and single crochet back in that same space. So you've got single crochet, chain three, close it to make a pico, and a single crochet in that top space. And then you're going to single crochet down the other side four times in the back loops only. And just like the rest of the petals, we're going to skip these two and single crochet in the next. And single crochet the next three. That gives you a total of four single crochets up this side of the petal, and we're at the top, so we need to single crochet, chain three, close the pico, or make the slip stitch into the first chain to close the pico, and single crochet again. Single crochet in the next four. One, two, three, four, skip the next two, single crochet in the next four, single crochet, chain three, slip stitch into the first chain, and single crochet. You're going to repeat this all the way around until you get to here and I'll show you how to close this up and finish off when we get there. And we'll make one more petal together. So we're going to crochet down the side of the petal four times. Skip two crochet four times, should say it's single crochets in each of those four. 
single crochet, pico, and single crochet. single crochet in the next four. Skip two, single crochet in the next four, single crochet pico, single crochet in the top of each petal, and single crochet the next four down the other side. Skip two, single crochet four, single crochet pico, single crochet, and single crochet chain four down the other side. And I'll meet you up back here when we get to the last stitch where your hanger is, your hanging loop. Once you've made your final single crochet here, all that you're gonna do well, you'll need to decide if you want your hanging loop in the front or if you want it in the back. I prefer to have mine in the back. When you're not ha hanging it, it will, and you're using it, it'll naturally fall behind and you just won't even see it. So all that you need to do is slip stitch into the first single crochet of the round. So if you're making your loop behind, you just single crochet in front of it. I'm sorry, you slip stitch in front of it and then you'll fasten off. Let me show you what it looks like if you put your hanging loop in front. You just hold it down in front so it's out of your way and slip stitch into that first single crochet and that's what it would look like if you put it in front. I'm going to do mine behind so I'm just going to slip the loop back there so that I am put my green in front of my hanging loop and then fasten off. Leave yourself a long enough tail to sew in. Grab your darning needle and sew in your ends. Oops. Just going to go through a few stitches this way and a few back the other way and then one more time. Make sure that you don't pull your string too tight or it'll disfigure your petals. Trim it. And do the same thing with your other tails. I'm not going to do that on camera. And then just fluff up your petals. They should naturally fall in a bit of a spiral. If they don't, if you have any that, you, you know, just fall like that, just pick them up and just give them a little pinch and they'll fall into place for you. That's it. I hope you like this tutorial.
please leave a comment below. This is my first video, so hopefully I'll get better with time. If you would like the written pattern, I'll leave a link in the description box below. See you next time.